Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Esco Fallman and I'm in it for the money. In this video, we're gonna look at CADI, which stands for Currency of the Internet. This is gonna be an ultra short review, which is kinda of nuts because it is a very ambitious project with a lot of technical details, especially technical details. But very short. CADI is a payment transaction network that is supported by a native digital currency, CADI. Um, they're trying to combine what they perceive as the best from traditional payment solutions with the best of blockchain technology. And it's really a highly technology focused um, project and they try to address some of the deficiencies that cryptocurrencies currently have as a means of payment. Um, we've heard this before, but these people are basically trying to solve uh, the issues, the scalability issues that prevents Bitcoin from being a global means of payment. There's a little more to it than that, and we're going to look at the vision, and we're going to look at the token economics, and we're going to look at the team, and a few other parameters that I consider relatively important. This is a sponsored video, so please remember that this is not a recommendation to invest. This is simply a relatively quick rundown of the project. You can make up your own mind uh, by doing uh, DYOR, do your own research, and also, I just want to say DPM, don't blame me for anything, really. But that being said, let's get to it. Here's the Cardi website. I just want to start with the token sale details real quick here. As you can see, you need, in order to partake in the pre-sale, you need to uh, be whitelisted. And this is the deadline for being whitelisted. So and it's running out relatively quickly. I also just want to take a quick look at their medium here and look at this article here. Well, the actual pre-sale contribution runs from June 4 to 5, and only that. What is the token price? 0.1 per Cadi. And also, there are two options for people who are interested in investing here. You do no lockup, and this is only for the pre-sale, and you get a 15% discount. Or you can choose to opt in for a six month lockup at, yeah, so at a 25% discount. The minimum con contribution is this. And there's also a maximum contribution. And as I just mentioned, it only runs for, the pre ICO only runs for 48 hours. And during the first 24 hours, these are the maximum contributions. It's really not a whole lot. It was like a thousand dollars or so. And after the last 24 hours, you can contribute a lot more, of course. But still, there's also some other uh, pretty crucial information. So if you are looking to invest, um, I would definitely recommend that you read this article. And of course, the ticker for Cadi, once they hit the markets, will also be Cadi. So we have several white papers here. We have a technical white paper. We have a business overview, that's what I would call the regular white paper, and we also have a token economy document. But let's start out with the normal white paper here on page six, not on page six, on page eight. This is basically a list of their objectives. And as you can see, the Cardi network was designed with the goal of developing a next generation payments network that could gain widespread adoption by consumers and merchants, serving as a catalyst for mainstream acceptance of digital currencies as a payment method. I just want to look real quick at these objective. Objective one, decentralization, nothing special about that. In this space, objective two, scalability and instantaneity. Objective three, reliability. That's of course also important. Objective four, security. Objective five, low to zero fees. Very attractive compared to modern, um, I'm sorry, not modern, current non-modern obsolete uh, payment network solutions objective assist trust generative <clears throat> there's seven ease of use also very important can say a lot of good things about cryptocurrencies but they certainly currently aren't easily used for the average user objective eight regulatory compliance also very awesome to focus on of course necessity to focus on in this type of project now, a few key points from the white paper. The fees on the Cadi network varies according to a user risk profile. Uh, and trusted users 
have to pay smaller have to pay smaller fees and of course high risk users or high risk profiles pay higher fees until they improve improve their score and they have this built in trust scoring engine that assigns a trust score to users when buyers and sellers interact and thus also determine the the, the size of the fees they also have a mediation system in place which is actually um, being run or supposed to be run by actual human beings. You can even sign up for becoming a mediator on their website. <clears throat> and they're also long-term developing an exchange to provide access to liquidity where people, as way I understand it, can cash in and out, in and out of crypto and fiat, etc. Another strong selling point is that merchants that collaborate with the Cardi network that are integrated in the network also get what they call hedging services. So they don't have to worry about short-term price fluctuations. This is supposed to be done with a sort of um, shorting options or something like that. I haven't really looked deep into that, but I do suspect that the reason why many um, merchants, especially online merchants maybe, are reluctant to accept crypto payments today is because, well, maybe when the, when the business day is over, you know, all they earn could be down 20% in value, which is of course not something that you can really, you can't use, you can't have that when you're running a serious business. As I mentioned, there's also a technical white paper. It is indeed extremely technical. I've, it's, it's a scientific paper basically. And they spend a lot of time um, addressing and explaining security issues and how to deal with them. And they also built this simulator um, to run all sorts of scenarios, not all, only to run all sorts of scenarios, but also to demonstrate how the network will, will actually work. It's, and it does say in the tech white paper that it's supposed to be available on, on GitHub. It's not, it's on the website though. So have a little, so let's have a little look at that. So here's the simulation or the simulator that I was talking about. And this is of course, examples of how the network looks like. And as you can see, this source is someone initiating a transaction. Um, and this is um, validated transaction. This is confirmed transaction. You can see how the network actually grows and you can also see some details on the actual uh, this is of course um, a simulator, but as you can see, there's a trust score and a transaction idea, and it does, uh, yeah, <laughs> it keeps growing all the time. From the tech side of this, as you know, I'm not huge on very complex technology, but I just want to say that they use this um, so-called um, acyclic graph or DAG of transaction, which is called the cluster, as opposed to a blockchain. So it's it's in the it's in the blockchain family. It's it's a relative to blockchain, I guess you could say. But it is a cluster, as you can see here in this three D um, visual representation. I'm not going to dwell um, anymore on this. I want to look into the token economics and token sale details as well here. As you can see, it's a limited supply token. There's going to be um, at some point two billion tokens in total existence and. You can see on this chart how they're being allocated. Only 30% is sold in the token sale. That could maybe be um, a higher number is always attractive to investors the way I see it. But of course, they probably need, as we can see here, they need a pretty big pool of tokens for backers, partners and advisors and maybe especially the incentive program they're running to get merchants on board, I'm assuming, and also a liquidity pool. The team takes 15% is also a little high, but still, why not? And again, they actually have these, the lockup periods, I love that stuff. And um, the use of proceeds, as you can see, research and development, actually 30% goes into that, that's a lot. Security, 5% cybersecurity. Licenses and legal requirements, 12% for that. that. That's understandable. I understand that. Uh, by the way, I'm, I believe the hard cap is about $25 million. Just a little detail here. Legal and compliance, 9% marketing, 15 probably also a pretty good idea. Uh, merchant services, 8%. Market maker, 7 Cotty fund, I don't know what that is, 7%. Operational expenses, not reasonable as well. And as you can see here, all of the token sale contributors will be awarded additional discounts based on their lockup choice. 
detailed on page five. This is what we already saw in the other document. You can see the lockup period here. But the point I want to make here is some people actually opted in to a 24 month lockup period, which is, of course, uh, that's actually a great idea. I, I'm, uh, I don't know why we don't see that more often in this space, but it's actually pretty cool to give bonuses, not crazy bonuses, but decent bonuses if people agree to a lockup period. This is also important. ERC20 tokens will be issued for the purpose of providing an official record of tokens sold. This is what people will get following the token sale. And after the launch of the Cody mainnet, the ERC20 tokens will be converted into coins issued on the Cody, Cody Network's transaction ledger with or without prior notice at Cody's sole discretion. So let's just have a look at this section here. In order to ensure that the Cody network is able to introduce additional tokens into the supply at a later stage, an additional 2 billion Cody will be created and locked in reserve. So the maximum supply of the token will be 4 billion Cody. This may sound some, like something that's very unattractive to investors, but it's actually probably a necessity um, for a payment solution network. If they run out of tokens, or rather, if token supply is probably very uh, is, is all of a sudden very scarce, that might lead to uh, very high fluctuations in the value of each token, which is of course not a good thing when we're talking about merchant um, and user uh, mass adoption. But it does state here that reserve tokens will not be released prior to the launch of Cody's mainnet, and the reserve tokens will be unlocked only under circumstances that would add additional value to the network and maintain its flexibility. For example, reserve tokens may be released for the purposes of collaborating with other networks. And of course, here's the good news. Uh, any release of reserve tokens will require the majority approval of Cody mediators, Cody as a company will not control the release of tokens from the reserve and will not be entitled to receive any portion of the reserve tokens. So it's not just something that the company can dictate, oh, we're just going to dilute the, <laughs> the supply. Uh, but sp speaking of company and team, let's have a look at the team here. Actually, I want to have a look at the team here on LinkedIn, Cody Group. Here they are. As you can see, there's 38 employees on LinkedIn, and I just want to look at them here because that also enables us to see their title and location. As you can see, some of them are in the Los Angeles area, and I believe there's an overweight of people in Israel as well, a guy in Johannesburg as well. They really are distributed all over the world, even though there's an overweight of it's, I believe it's, it's founded in Israel, this company. But again, they do have some very high profile people here. This guy, um, CEO, he has been running a couple of successful ad companies. Errol, a research and software engineer, another research engineer, a software engineer, and a data scientist. Backers and advisors, of course, there are more team members as we just saw here. There's actually a whole lot, but there is a heavy focus on software development, but also on social media. And of course, that also ties in with the founder's background, probably. And I will say um, it does seem to be a very strong team. They also have some partnerships in place. Uh, good old banker partnership, of course, but let's just have a brief look at some of these other companies. These are all things they're partners with. Transact Europe, the leader in European payments. Look into that on your own. Um, Global Payment Solutions, a company same along the same lines. An algo trading company, and what's this? Oh yeah, this is the this is the company that. Uh, the CEO here founded and used to be a CEO of as well. One more thing I want to look at is the roadmap. This is again, as is always the case with most ambitious projects, a long-term investment. And of course, this also is one of the reasons why they have these lockup periods. So as you can see here, Q4 or 2018, this is where the fund begins, consumer wallet prototype, trust score server prototype, full node, DSP node, and history node prototypes. Q2 2019, yes, I, there's no reason why I read all this 
um, for you, but I just want to stress a couple things here. 2020 debit card launch. Haven't even talked about that yet. Recurring billing, hedging service launch, the one we already mentioned with the merchants and 2021 expansion of the merchant services. But as you can see, the roadmap continues all the way up until 2021. So yeah, it will, it would be a long-term hold probably, even though there's of course a lot of milestones. The big question is of course, can they achieve what they set out to achieve? I don't know. Of course, I don't know, but I know that if they do, there will likely be a high demand for the tokens, which could also lead to a growth in to well, which would definitely lead to a growth in token value. But I also know that if not, the tokens could lose significant value and ultimately be worth nothing. It's a highly ambitious project and it is a huge team and they do seem uh, well-rounded in terms of their skills and capabilities. But that again, they are setting out to do something that a lot of other competitors are also trying to solve. So that may be the biggest issue here, competition. I will say this though, other medium, they published this article a while back, May 3rd. Um, Cardi signs up over 2,000 global merchants and 50,000 users to its crypto payment services. 2,000 global merchants. That is significant. I don't know specifically who these merchants are, but according to this article, they've probably been um, convinced that this was a good idea because Cardi has developed this new base protocol that they call the Trust Chain and they even trademarked it, which is kind of cool. But all in all, if you're interested in this project, I would encourage you go to their website, go to their medium, there are many articles on there. You can definitely also find some debate online about whether Cadi has a fair chance of becoming the next number one payment solution provider on the internet. Um, I, yeah, it's an interesting project and super ambitious. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just me giving you a very short rundown. I was hoping to be able to cover this in less than 10 minutes. I'm not quite sure I accomplished that, but I do want to just thank you for watching this video to the end. And I also want to say, if you like it, why not consider subscribing to my channel? It doesn't cost anything to you, but it has value to me. Also remember, there are no guarantees in crypto, never ever, but there is plenty of opportunity. And thanks for watching In It For The Money. I'm in it for the money.